So you change to the to the forehand grip a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit more to open up the, the racket. So I highly, highly recommend this. Also, the second thing you should do more in a match is to play on the yellow marker. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to work on uh, five things everybody can improve in match play. And we're going to start with keeping the volleys lower. So we're going to have an exercise. Muriel is making an exercise. With the rope, as you can see at the back, to keep the volley lower. But I don't know what we're going to do. What are we going to do, Muriel? I'm gonna defend only yeah. low, so you're gonna hit only volleys. Okay. And your goal is to keep them as low as possible. Okay. And you can use the rope as a visual uh, tool yeah. to, to see how the, the balls are bouncing. Yeah. Um, so let's see how it goes. Okay, vamos. So in my match, they took over my volleys. So I want to play like an aggressive ball, not super aggressive. I didn't make a lot of mistakes in the match, but the most of the time is I felt like I played a good volley, but they still managed to take over my volley. So I guess my volley was not low enough, had not enough slice, not enough slice. So that's gonna work on today. So the ball should go wherever, but it should go underneath the rope. It was unlucky. Yeah, also the second thing you should do more in a match, what I should do more in a match, but maybe you could as well, is to play on the yellow marker. So why, why on the marker? So to keep creating space while working in the, in the cross, yeah. you can keep me moving from this way. So you create angles as well. Okay. This is what you should do, usually do in the match as well. Okay. So why not in practice? Yeah. Yeah, so, so the goal is not to score the volley, the goal is to keep pressure on the defender. So uh, if he gets it back, fine, but the, the goal is that he cannot play the lob, so you lose the net position. And I already feel that I am lower to the ground, which is very nice, because the, I get like this urge to keep the volley low and my entire body goes low. The third thing you should do, move lower at the net and at the back. No, right, well. So you change grip when you have yeah. time? So while volleying, especially when I have more time uh, on backhand side, I turn to move my racket a bit more to the left side to open, open the, the racket. Yeah. And there, create more rotation. more rotation. And same actually for forehand side. So you change to the, to the forehand grip a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little bit more to open up the, the racket. Yeah. And to maintain a firm, firm grip as well, especially and on forehand side. Okay. You can have your Racket a bit more open, but still have a firm grip on your racket. Because okay. when you turn the other side, it's close. your hand will be on this side of the racket, okay. which creates non, not so pleasant movement. So when you have time, you change a little bit to the forehand. Yes. For more rotation. So for the ball will rotation. be probably lower. Yes. Only with the volleys, not with another shot. Uh, well, we're talking now about the volley, so for now, with yeah. the bandeja, actually the same. Okay. Interesting. That's why the rope is there. 
You cannot attack me. Do you change it? Muy bien, muy bien. This is a very good exercise to do. I highly, highly recommend this. You can do this parallel or cross to have the rope at the last part of the, of the fence. Uriel has 100 meter left at the bottom of the sailing shop. I don't know how, but this is a very good method. And I would recommend to, to hang it just below the first bar. So maybe 15 blocks or 10 blocks up. Uh, and to have like a long rallies where uh, I, I feel like I'm forced to go low and to force to keep the ball low and you have instant feedback in how good your volleys is. So this is one of the best exercises that you can do to keep your volley low. I think tip number four, what you should do more in a match is change the speed of the ball at the net and at the back. I was playing too fast and then Uriel could defend everything. So I need to change the, the speed of the ball and the angle in order to be more offensive. Bien. Bien. My knees are above the rope. It's not good. So let's see if we can get your hips more around the line of the, the Okay, rope. so this is on camera, so if <laughs> we can record and we watch back. Yes. My knees has to be lower than the yellow rope. Okay. <laughs> yes, point. You kill everybody with humor. Oh fuck, sorry. I don't know. I move well. Oh, I would have had it. So important to move low, to play low. Because the moment, now when I'm playing the FIP against two Spanish players and I play too high, you're done. You lose the point or the net or whatever. So being low is so important. So I guess you should do some stretching. As we say in Dutch, spiker poepen. Spiker poepen, we say in Dutch. Pooping nails. Uh, so you have to learn to be low to the ground, to keep the ball low, because the moment you go up when you hit, the ball is too high and Uriel can kill me, and it's 15-0. So one of the most important things, be low, play low, or, or lob. But when you defend, when you volley, you have to really focus on keeping the ball low, and maybe focus a little bit less on how fast you play. 
If you play slow and the ball is low, it is super difficult. And they can never play the lob, so you will hold in that position. Once you're in a good rhythm, sometimes accelerate, but not too much. This is important. Because now, in the match, I was playing fast volleys, and this Spanish guy didn't give a shit. He was taking over my fast volley, so it's not useful. Who likes the Flintstones more, people from Abu Dhabi or from Dubai? Dubai. Dubai? No. <laughs> uh, the people from Dubai don't, but the people from Abu Dhabi do. Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> yeah, but I do. That was him, toch? Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke. <laughs> Tip number five is move faster and move earlier. So when you have the lob, go back straight away because now I feel immense difference if I'm already there or I'm just close to the net. Move early and move fast. So we mentioned moving faster, but also moving earlier is an option to create a position where you can uh, uh, improve your shot. And basically how it works, whenever you play volley and you already think the lob is coming, you can try to move your body sideways just before the opponent is hitting the ball which makes you a bit more faster behind the ball, which can result in a better uh, execution of your stroke. Yeah, and, and if, if it's low, you can always adjust. Yeah, when the volley comes again from this, this moment, you can always move back to hit the volley. Yeah. But in sometimes it helps you to be faster behind the ball. Yeah. When you read the play well. Yeah, because be getting behind the ball with the smash and the Vibora and the Bandeja is so important. Yeah. Makes makes the, if you uh, I uh, I was struggling to play uh, a certain speed. I was playing everything too fast, but it was because the ball was behind me, and then it's difficult to to have a good control over your shot. If you hit the ball in front of you, it's easier to control the shot, and so the movement is might be one of the most important things. Yeah. And the balance mainly will be better. So yeah. the movement forward will be easier to make. Yeah, everything will be better. So start to move better. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see more training videos and match tips, then please let me know. If you want to see more videos with Uriel, let me know. And as always, have a nice Monday. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.